This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. Welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast presented by Pilot Games. Again, a reminder, use their products whenever you're out enjoying your libations, your pizza, your pub fare, because uh, when you use their e-tabs and everything else, your community wins. Um, John, speaking of community, uh, we're coming up on, well, we just passed Valentine's Day, love, all of that. Are you feeling warm, fuzzy love feelings for the the wild right now? It's great. I love it. I, I'm not a, like, let's get bad so we get good guy. And I got a theory on this, okay? Mm-hmm. So everybody that's like, let's get bad so we can get good. The real difference that we want in the state of Minnesota is we want to go from good to great. We want to get a cup. We want to win playoff rounds. So all sucking does all tanking does is gets you that chip in a chair that we've had for many years in a row so i think it's irrelevant i want playoffs every season possible and i like that they're heating up i I think it's great you're not of that camp that's like that looks at pittsburgh and their run forever and said that you have a number one pick a number two pick a number one pick a number two pick because it doesn't it's not an automatic it's not an automatic. It's not. Yeah, so you got some good guys. You, did you draft the right ones? Oh, and all of a sudden it's all going to be fixed. No. I would You're much saying. rather take a 1-16 in 16 chance to win the cup every single year than hope we hit on three or four prospects. I, I, I mean. You just want to catch heat at the right time. I, and I, you know what? I, I, I actually feel validated. I knew Kirill was going to get going. I, I did. I knew. I traded him in fantasy hockey straight up for Crosby, looking like a million bucks right now. And even just kind of walking around, I was like, I don't know. A lot of pretenders. Okay, St. Louis, Arizona, Nashville. Really? This is the people that are going to knock us out of the playoffs? Not so fast. Not so. Not so fast. I don't know. I want to get in. I love it. I love it more. It, it's night I think, and day. I think I'm in your camp, too. Like, let's get in. It's let's not so go. bad having a chance every year, you know? I love it. I, And so, and just like. Like Florida, Florida, I mean, they didn't, they don't have your number one, two, one, two picks. Nope. And uh, look what they, they do. They do have higher picks, like Akblad, but he's not even their best team, man. Uh, and then I don't know when Kachuk was taken. He's a first rounder for sure. But stud, yeah, Huberto was was higher. I don't know if Barkov was taken either. Anyways, maybe that's a terrible analogy. I just it's just not the right mentality. It, it, that's not how players. We're gonna have Mason Shaw on this podcast today. Could you imagine <laughs> telling Mason Shaw like, hey, you know, let's not. Let's not be in such a hurry. To I've not been grinding be. for nine and a half months, but hey. we're gonna give you we're gonna give you six more here. Act like act like he's a city worker or something. Like, hey, uh, you know, I think we don't need to get back to headquarters. I actually had a guy from the cable company come, and he he uh, he says to me this week, I didn't get cable. Just relax. I got streaming or whatever. I got the internet. You don't judge me. On your head. Don't you judge no. me. But he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I thought this was gonna be a a five-hour deal when I was looking at the work order because he had all these TVs from last time. He goes, but we're just going to do this. We're going to let headquarters think it still is a five-hour job, and I'll sort it up as quick as I can. Maybe head over to Firehouse Subs or whatever the hell the guy was going to do. He's telling us this. I'm like, hey, man, that's up to you with this patch. You can have your afternoon, but are you going to get the Internet going? I mean, that's just not... Like, that's not the mentality of a winning hockey team. It's not the mentality of winners. Try to get there, man. Cat's out of the bag. We got the Alberta Shaman on the podcast. So Yeah, he's the perfect example of not quitting and and trying to be better than you've ever been before. And if you're a master of deductive reasoning, um, it is 
Friday, the day, the first day on the ice for Mason Shaw with the Wild. Uh, re- recording early, special feature because we had a chance to get the Alberta Shaman. Uh, next week with the schedule, things don't lay out great for recording a podcast with a guest. It's Monday afternoon, President's Day, afternoon game. That one, John says it is okay. Bring the kids, bring the family. I'm fine with kids until playoffs. Any time of day. Yeah. But especially afternoon games, midweek, President's Day. Cool. Bring the kids. Yeah. Once it's playoffs, no. But then it's then it's right back to in Winnipeg on Tuesday. So anyways, long story short, we're recording the podcast early. It's Friday. But uh, with that, you're still wearing this week's attire. Looks like you've dressed for I, Valentine's Day. I did wear did red yesterday can down the as road? well. I, I think I'm, life is a theme party. Uh, I wore red on Valentine's Day. I wore green on St. Patrick's Day. And I feel totally good about Tell it. Tell us about your Valentine's Day. Uh, you know what? Um, was that yesterday? Two days ago. It's Friday. Uh, what did we do? Oh, you know what? Actually, I got a good story for you. Um, I had been celebrating my wife's 50th birthday for about two weeks straight. I mean 40. Um, looks 30. Um, and uh, that was like the Felino brothers right there. I just nailed that. But the uh, So she made a steak dinner. Um and you're going to love this as a honey guy and all of your other hobbies. She found a potato that was in the exact shape of a heart. You can't make this up, Kurtz. And uh, we had a little steak dinner for the listeners at home. I actually <laughs> took, I took a piece of asparagus, is the asparagus arrow? and uh, put an arrow through it. I love the blue cheese there. Um, I don't know if we watched some show or whatever, but we did Valentine's Day at home and had a nice steak dinner. You know what? It was, I don't remember what day it was. When was Valentine's Day? When you love your wife as much as you do every day is Valentine's Day. I think that's kind of what you're oh, saying right thank now. thank you. Isn't thank that what you. he's saying? That's a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. No, but I, I had done some work on the birthday. I, I did a lot of trying hard for her birthday fortnight. So she kind of took charge. I did, uh, you'll like this one. I was gonna work out and uh my buddy guz i'm like hey he's like i gotta go pick up a prescription but i'll meet you up there sounds like two old guys about to work out right i go hey will you get me a valentine's day card he goes are you serious he goes you're not getting your wife a valentine's day card you've been married like 25 years i go i gotta get it if you don't get it it's bad you gotta get it it's not about getting it's about say they don't want it they say (laughs) they don't want it they're like seven bucks they hate the whole idea of it but you gotta get it and he said, I don't think so. I think you set the precedent. I go, dude, you're already there. Bring the card to Lifetime. So I'm on the elliptical. He just hands me my Valentine's Day card. <laughs> Sign it. Luckily, my wife doesn't listen to this. She'll never that's a, know. That's a bro that's Valentine. That's a pro move, right? That's a bro Valentine. And she did a good. he did a good card, you know. I thought it was good. But you also made a return, uh, a special return to the ice. Is I did. Is true? Yeah. First time in a year. Yeah, probably probably more than a year. Yeah, I Hockey played, Day Minnesota, you played in a celeb game? No, uh, yeah, probably. And you won that, as I understand it. You're known for winning. It was so long ago that I don't recall. You did. You won that game. You, your I team won. I think I was traded halfway through and lost. I thought you won. But so you went to the famous Monday Night Hockey at White Bear? Yeah, hit. The, with the good people. Gassed. And what? So what? I was, base, I was in a wheelchair Tuesday morning, first thing. Yeah, and I, I did. You may or may not have said, "I, I don't know if I ever want to play hockey again." As we were getting ready to record, what happened? <laughs> Nothing happened other than hockey. I know, but like, <laughs> it's amazing what? how how fast you get bad. And I'm, that's not me saying I was good. I'm just saying, like, it was like it was a struggle. Oh man, did you go to the bar? All after? Swedish, no finish. No, I couldn't make it. I was too tired. Did you get like feel sick? Like you're gonna throw up? <laughs> I I did feel a little sick. Well, because now you got to remember to get back. And this is me telling you. I didn't know. It takes I, a bit to I get didn't, back. I didn't know how to put my gear on. So when I when I put my gear on, it's usually like socks first, sh- um, pants, everything else, and then my shin pads go last. And then I tape them on. And then I go out. I put my shin pads on first. I did everything backwards. I don't even know how to be a hockey player anymore. Well, you don't know how it to. Was, it you don't was know bad. how to be a beer leaguer. It was bad. Your, I know. And then I was the only one. You're a pro. I was the only one with breezers. Yeah. No, you don't want to do those. So then I looked like a bender. 
It's just there's just a, it was just a lot of bad stuff going on there. So you got to get sweats. I knew I got to get a, a, a Heather Gray and pair I, of sweats. I would sweats. probably but like. But my hips are bad too, so I got to get like a. I don't like think one of those should, girdles that have pads for like football players. That's what I need underneath my sweats. I'm just yeah. You need the uh, the shorts, equipped. the shorts with the the pads and the cup built in. Those guys are good though. Those guys like, Monday play. night good. Well, just I, I don't know. Just in general, guys that skate once a week are good. Yeah, some of them. <laughs> I uh, I don't think you should retire. It's done. No, no, because you're you're you got that fire. In I'm your gonna belly. try. Maybe I'll try one more time with Mike Madonna's street hockey stick, and if yes, <laughs> you should bring it. If that thing works, then I'm back, baby. So here's the kind of thing that I am struggling with beer league related. So I I kind of didn't drink in January ish, and I wasn't going to the bar after hockey just because I was just avoiding it. Which is a good way to make a. Is real that because you didn't score? Because it's a hundred bucks. That's a good way to make a lifestyle change. <laughs> is just to like not do anything. That means it'll stick. But I, uh, so I'm back at the bar now. I had a couple tequila sodas after Tuesday's hockey. Kind of had a little headache in the morning. Uh, then about a half hour into the day, I was fine. So, what do you think you do? Is it just like one drink after hockey? You still go to the bar. You're social. You just have one drink. And I was even thinking, what if it was like a glass of like wine, like Timu would do, you know? Like, cause then you're like off the whole program. Like, no one can judge you. They don't think you should have four white claws or five beers or a. I've, you know, I've a, talked about this, I think, with you. I'm super insecure about certain things that I consume. Yeah. So, for example, do you remember the old cigarettes, Virginia Slims? Yeah. Uh, what is it? Um, you've come a long way, baby. Yeah. They were targeted for like women. Yeah, and you love to smoke Virginia Slims. No, but whenever yeah, I drink, be. I like seltzer because I can't handle beer, and beer is like the drink of choice post men's league hockey. It's called it, heck, it's called beer league hockey. But I can't handle beer, so then I drink seltzers. But they're in these skinny little cans that remind yeah. me of Virginia Slim cigarette. I get it. Okay. And then I feel like n- like much less of a hockey player going to the bar after and saying, "Can I get a skinny can?" So of this is seltzer? so. Wait, let me get this straight. This is after you play beer league in the rink that has a giant picture of you holding up the Stanley Cup in it, like that one. And then you go drink a seltzer. I think you're okay, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, also, like, I think you're fine. But, hey, I think I think you're okay. Hey, it's do a any skinny of the, can. Do any of the marketing people out there? All all I want, and I will be your number one consumer, is a 16 ounce can, like a man style can, and you can call it seltzer, S I R. So it's like made for. God, you're just giving away stuff. This is millions. This is like the sauna. And if you want to make a skinny can, it can be seltzer. Well, have you been to a concert and they have the giant seltzers? Those are like, yeah, those are okay. Those are you great. can't get them. You can't get them anywhere. Yeah, they should sell that. Like that's a, what I want. So you want I would go? I would so go what you like, really want is a seltzer silo. Seltzer silo. Yeah, seltzer bed wetter. The sixteen ounce bed wetter. Yeah, the bed wetter. The seltzer silo. Is this going well? Do I have to re-record this whole thing? Um, I <laughs> Cut. <laughs> uh, uh, Two meatheads, huh? I don't know what's going on. Are we still going? This will yeah. play great on ballets. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, uh, okay, just do the interview. Yeah. Um, Let's get back to the wild. So um, I Mason Shaw is signed, and I think there was question marks on whether he was going to be able to return. Physically, would he be able to play into playing games in Iowa? I think he's got nine games, seven points. So I think he's been productive offensively, too. Stud. But, you know, his game was predicated on speed and physicality. And if you can't be fast and you can't be physical, it, it's hard to be effective in hockey in the role that he plays. You know, he's a killer. He does all these things. So no question, mobility was going to be um, at the forefront on in, in everybody's eyes, and if he could make his way back to the NHL, well, man, this dude has absolutely crushed it. And um, I, I don't know, I don't know how he's done it. ACL, which used to take what minimum twelve months, is now nine and a half months, and the guy's right back here. But I think it's at the right time too. It's a shot in the arm of a club that's doing well, so they've won, and it hasn't felt like it. Seven of their last nine, four in a row coming out of the break. Hines has talked about the fact that he has challenged the guys to 
compete out of the break to just make sure like one thing we're going to try to do is work harder than the other team every single night and however things shake out that's fine but we're going to check that box they have checked that box and now all of a sudden they're winning games but they're also getting a shot in the arm at the right time and i think this is how you go on big runs like you're playing well things are going right for you and then boom you get another shot in the arm and it's mason shaw so he signed his deal uh and now, will he be in the lineup against Buffalo? I don't think he's going to be in the lineup against Buffalo. As a matter of fact, no, he's not. Okay. Um, he's not going to be in the lineup in Buffalo. It's going to take a couple of practices, I think. Um, but he's up here. Yeah, for he's the here. time being. So if you, if we want, I know to, he practiced today. If, if we like, want to unpack that, which is a good time to do without him next to us, is it's like he was on an AHL only deal, which means that he could only play in the American League. You cannot play in the NHL on an AHL deal. So for him to be able to play NHL games, they had to sign him to an NHL contract. Two way. Now an NHL contract can have two ways. You can seven seventy five four hundred. You can have the NHL and the AHL salary. But if you're reading between the lines, the only reason that they would want to sign him to an NHL deal is they want to use him. If he's going to play and think he can play NHL games. And you're absolutely right about Mason Shaw. It's like when a team's on a heater, it's like a craps table, right? The nicknames are going. People are kissing the dice. You feel like you're on the great space coaster. Can you imagine you can just insert the shaman? little dip. Maybe we stub our toe against Buffalo. It's like, oh, hold on, Vancouver, Shawzy. I mean, that's a great card. I mean, he's a cowboy. He's a bunkhouse guy. Every he's even he's a bunkhouse guy. He is like, a bunk. He is a cowboy hat with the the brim folded he, this way, maybe facing backwards on the cow on the on the horse. He's a, he is everybody's happy. I didn't. I I wanted to get here early enough to see him come on the ice and have everybody be like, Shawzy. I mean, he's like people love Mason Shaw, and that's I, a great ingredient. That's going to keep the run going. Yeah. And I think if you look on Instagram, like the photos of him walking into the rink for the first time with his bag, too, he might have the upper, most likes. But an upper decker in there, too. Like, he was ready. He had it. Look, he's got one. <laughs> he's oh, here. boy. Let's bring him into hey, the wait, pod. Wait, this, this is how we bring him in. We got to do Kabas, Elas, Kabas, <laughs> something like that. That's what makes the cows come. All right, Kinger, before we, we bring in the Alberta Shaman, we, we have some business we need to get to here. Um, if you were to offer him maybe like a post-practice type of uh, snack, what would it be? Oh, for the shaman? Well, he works hard. Like, he's familiar with harvest and working the land. I would get him a healthy snack from Jimmy's, maybe some dip. It is dip season. I think he's a guy that would be familiar with dip from the looks of him. We'll get him some dips, maybe a dill dip, vegetable dip, smoky dip from Jimmy's. Uh, Bring a vegetable tray. You know, impress the guys. I think him coming and bringing some healthy snacks would also show the team he's maybe turned over a new leaf. So Jimmy's, <laughs> Jimmy's vegetable. I don't know. Jimmy's salad dressings and dips. Jimmy's salad dressings and dips. Don't you be messing with my dressing. I'm the only one that thought that was we, funny. But um, no, back to you. Tape to tape. I think what's happening here is this is a Friday record versus a Monday record. We're dialed on Monday. So. I feel like I did something before Fridays this, but I show. didn't. I'm just high on life, I guess. I yeah, know. sure. Uh, how about you? Uh, well, again. He's just built back his knee for the fourth time. He constructed it. He reconstructed it. it. That's right. And so, if you need to reconstruct some yes. stuff, like see, see that's like it's roof the confidence in your roof, in the companies potentially some siding windows. If you need help in that regard, our friends at Wild Construction will help you out. Uh, again, they specialize in in roofs, storm damage, uh, and any exterior stuff there. But they can do more. They have resources on their website uh, to help you see if you were in an area that has had storm damage. Uh, when the storms were you can have somebody come up on your roof now after the snow melts because ironically uh, it is feels like it snowed for the first time here so winter has started in february we're all afraid of that Uh, but line them up and as soon as they can get on the roof they'll check it out it can take up to 12 months for some of that damage to show from storm damage so wildconstructionmn.com they'll make it happen
Spend 2024 with your Minnesota Wild. From puck drops to overtimes, we look forward to seeing the best fans in the league at an upcoming home game. Secure your tickets now at wild.com slash single game. Boom, bring in the shaman because he's sitting here. We yeah, we got it. Let's him. do a real intro for him, though. Because um, this guy, talk about working your way back. The Alberta shaman. This is a guy who went for Halloween as a cow for 12 consecutive years. He uh, He's not as handsome as Delbert, but he's close. He's the king of Wainwright. He's got a fresh pen, made his way up the highway to Minnesota to be with the boys, fresh off his first practice. Welcome back, you stud, you animal, you hero, Mason Shaw. Good job, boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. This is the trifecta for me now, so... This is a hat trick, and I gotta have a good showing here. But are you are you kind of, you guys? Are you kind of saying that you, when you got asked to be on the podcast, is the moment you knew you were actually back? Yeah, that was that's when I knew <laughs> I was that helps. Back is when, that helps. When Sicky said the boys want to get you on the podcast, I got okay. I go okay. Now yeah. I'm comfortable again. Now I can. We're back. I can baby. be where I'm supposed to be. But so, I didn't know. I didn't know when I could join in on. The ad reads there, so I just kind of held my peace. Yeah, but that I wasn't think our Zuki best. would be a lot happier if I brought the T Rex cookie <laughs> into the rooms versus versus the salad dip. But you can you can bring him. He's a got T-Rex. a sweet tooth. He's got well, and I do too. So I'd be following following the lead on the T Rex cookies, whoever those are. We've been better on the live reads there. I think we I don't know we we struggled a little bit. Sometimes we're tape to tape. There's a lot of chemistry. That one kind of came in fast. But what's it? Uh, so you were just on the ice with the boys in St. Paul, Minnesota. I know you've been back with Iowa. You worked your way back from a fourth ACL, which is insane. But now you're in uh, St. Paul with the the big club. What was it like? Yeah, it was great. I feel like uh, I feel like I haven't really skipped a beat in terms of of the guys that are here, and I feel like I'm very familiar with everyone, very familiar with with the staff and whatnot. Obviously, this is the first time meeting meeting Heinze, but um, it felt great. I had. Uh, my gear felt like I was in a, a, a TV box or something. It's the first time I've worn that gear in a long time. So oh, because it's your practice stiff. gear. Yeah, it's a practice gear, and I haven't, I've hardly worn that at all, to be honest. So um, that was a little bit rough, to be honest, and I had new skates today. But <laughs> all that aside, it was just great to be out there with those guys again, and it was, uh, it's great. I mean, I'm not used to seeing fans in the stands in practice, so you know, I got someone heckling you a little bit when it doesn't go your way, but it was, uh, it was really fun to be back there. It, it did look like you're re-entering the bunkhouse, though. Like, the photos I saw, you just walk into Tria with the bag on the shoulder and, like, what's up, boys? I'm back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Tyler, the chef, he had knew exactly how I like my eggs. It was just, like, just like rinse, repeat again kind of thing. So, um, obviously, been away from the guys for, I don't know, two months now and, and missed them dearly, but I'm glad to be back. So, it's great. So, walk us through exactly what it was again, just for people that maybe don't know. You've had four ACLs. Um, give us the order of them, and you should start a Wikipedia for your. Sure, knees. I'm starting to like forget this myself even. But basically, uh, 27 or 20, 2016 left knee, 2018 right knee, uh, 2020 my first year pro in Iowa. I heard it in playoffs after playing every single game that year. Had the 76 games, the first two playoff games, and then the third one it went. Which one was that? That was the right now. That was. So it went left, right, right. Left, right, left, right. Oh, okay, I'll try that. Right. So, last year, right so before predictable. playoffs, I got the, the right knee done again, which gave me some restrictions to driving right away, but I maybe threw a bit of a flag there and probably started driving before I was allowed to with my left foot. But that's just learning how to drive with a stick. I guess you know how to. So who – I want to know. So this is like a this whole thing, building yourself back up, going to the dark place – putting notes to yourself in the mirror, whatever you have to do to get, like, who are the guys in the big club that, like, you just, your phone rings, it's, you know, 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, like, Shazzy, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, you know? Are we are feeling we... sorry for yourself? Like, I just love to hear, like, man, the, who, who, honestly, helped, who helped you through it? The list, the list is long here, man, I swear to God. Like, even, you know, when the guys first happened, you know, there's so there's so many guys that on this team that reached out to me. I, I would feel bad singling someone out by yeah, yeah. forgetting, but I truly mean it. I mean, throughout the whole time, guys were checking in on me. Luckily, through appointments and coming back to see the doctors, I was able to to join the guys at a few things. Like, I was at the Christmas party at Spurges and stuff, so guys were able to, to check in on me. But, um, you know, throughout the summer, whether guys were here or not, they were reaching out. And, um, like I said, they've, they've made me feel a part of this the whole time, even though I, you know, I – 
I wasn't part of this group for for the first while here, that, right? So that, that's that's the the truth of it. That's the oddest part about it all is that like you're either a part of it or you're not, and that's yeah. not personal. Yeah. At all, that's like the business side of it. You Absolutely. know, like you're a part of this team or you're not, and it's hard to be a part of team building events when you're not part of it. And in some regards, like I would I would guess that you wouldn't want to feel. Like you're imposing yourself on it when you're not a part of it at certain times yeah. too, right? Like it's it's just a weird spot and you don't hold any grudge. But that's also really cool that they're like, no, you like you are a part of it. Like you come, but that I think that's where I, I, you tell us because it's I, I find that different that uh, the organization and whomever it was, like you're training, you're working out, you're doing all these things, rehab, all the resources you need. Um, it, would you agree? Like all that stuff was was probably. I don't know what the right word is, but it's unnecessary. They didn't have to do that stuff. It was absolutely. I mean, from from day one when this happened, there's obviously a ton of uncertainty. There's the injury, there's the surgery, and then at the end of the day, you got to be able to get back and be able to be able to play at a high level. Um, you know, Billy and the in the management, they they gave me their word and they and they've stuck to it. Obviously, I had to do my side of things and and get healthy and get my game back to where I can help this team win. But throughout all of this, I mean, they've been amazing and. I can't thank them enough because they didn't have to do what they did and they've taken care of me from day one of this. So now it's uh, my turn to do my job and, and help out on the ice and help the team get wins. But like you said, when you're not, you know, everyone's been reaching out and done the team building stuff, but until you, you know, you're on the ice battling and, mm -hmm. and in war with them, you don't truly feel like you're part of the group. So it's glad that, that we got to this point that I can do that now. And um, the guys in Des Moines and Iowa were fantastic. I was fully, you know, invested when I was there. And I always said, I mean, if I, if I don't get my game to where it needs to go, it doesn't really matter what's been said or what I've been told in terms of, of my chance to get back here. So um, just just extremely grateful for it. And um, here we are. I get to get to truly be part of the team now. That's awesome. So what um, – I, th I think there's struggle associated with it. So, But before we get to that – what, like, what was the most fulfilling part about being on the ice today? Like, it, do you, did you, are you, at some point tonight when you put your head on the pillow, you're going to pat yourself on the back and say, man, we did it? I feel like, I feel like I, I haven't really had that moment yet. Um, and I don't know if I will. I mean, everything is so day by day. And um, I know what I've gone through to get this point, but I knew I could do it anyways from the get go. So I don't know if there was necessarily any moment where I was like, okay, if I get on that first practice or I sign the contract, like, I can pat myself on the back and, and take my foot off the gas. It's just not really the case in this business. So, um, you know, the day that I get to to be in the lineup and help the team win, that's probably when I'll, it'll really feel real. And then at the end of the day, it's drop the puck and we're hockey players. And I guess you like to think it's like riding a bike. Yeah, perhaps, you know, uh, maybe you don't because I, I don't. Do you, do you know, do you have to pass through waivers or is there anything like that? Or is it sign the deal, let's go? I, I have no clue, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I had a similar situation. So yeah. I got hurt. I was hurt over the summer, training camp, couldn't play, um, had my shoulder fixed, and then came back about the deadline. Were you under contract already, no. though? Okay. No. Um, signed my deal. But then I had to go through waivers. Oh which was, I was going to clear, like nobody's yeah. going to be like, I yeah. want this 35-year-old guy with one arm. I think arm. that's when everyone thinks about me. They're just, <laughs> if I want this guy who's blown out his knee four times, but um, I don't know about the whole waivers thing, but I just, I feel like my game's in a good spot right now. The first four down there were tough, absolutely. I mean, I felt like I was on training wheels out there a little bit, just trying to catch up with the speed of the game, but I think that's, I guess, a little bit to be expected after missing as much time as I did. No, this is in Iowa you're talking in about. Iowa, yeah. But you were uh, offensively productive right away. Yeah, well, the first four games weren't so good, to be honest, but I think the last four or five games I played there, I started to find a little bit, and every game is just, it just slowly felt better and a lot more comfortable. So, I mean, it's it's a damn good league there, and there's a lot of good players. So um, I knew it wasn't going to be easy whatsoever. You weren't just going to go there and get your cookies and, yeah, you know. It's hard. Phone ringing, hey, where am I at kind of thing. It's it's really hard. So, um, you know, just amazing guys down there, really good line mates to help me out, and it definitely felt like I was getting a little bit more into my game as as the games went on. Did you notice anything different being on the ice with the big club today? Like, were you like, oh, who's this, you know, this Faber guy? Or um, this guy's playing a little different. Or, yeah. you know, I was just curious, because you're coming in, right? Mm. It's, like you said, first day of school. Yeah. What did you notice uh, with being on the ice with the group? I think that's the one part which made me feel so familiar is, um, you know, I, I was around these guys all summer. So I got to see what Fabes was about this summer. I got to see what he did at the end of the year. Um, 
I mean, being on the ice with them is obviously is amazing. And finally, you can pass the puck around with hopefully your your new teammate kind of thing. But I've watched I've watched most of the guys' games, so I feel like I've had a pretty good idea of, of where the guys are at. And that's the nice part about this is it doesn't feel like it's completely um, something new to me. I feel like I'm pretty comfortable here. Yeah. Did you have a um, phrase or a song or, you know, it's interesting, right? Uh, you've been through this process a few times. Um, I'm just curious, like, if there's something that you go, man, if it wasn't for this yes. record or mm -hmm. this sentence or this is how I would have named this album, you know, the fourth knee album. I think I think one thing that, that stuck out to me is I, when I did it right away, someone sent me a text just saying, reward yourself for the battles you've, you've put in before to get through this and give yourself a chance again. And I think that that was something that kind of stuck with me is don't sell yourself short by not trying to get back again. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I think if there was something that maybe stuck out, you know, a phrase or something that stuck with me, it was that. So... Just reward yourself that. for the battles you've put in before and, and get through it again. How was, because you were a big part of, what do we call it, the Summer of Yes? Is that what it was? <laughs> it sure was. The summer of Yes. <laughs> the Summer of Yes. Was it just nice to have, like, a crew here that you could work out and train with? Because I can imagine that it, it could be a lonely spot rehabbing um, yeah. by yourself on a different workout program if you didn't have guys in there with you. Absolutely. I mean, it, I've always gone back home to Alberta to Wayne, where I'm from, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. The people there are great. I think it really helped though this year staying um, in the cities and, and with such a with such a good group of guys, it really made it easy for me to come do my rehab every day with a good mindset. And that truly mat you know, that that truly does matter. I think if you'd have been by yourself somewhere you maybe didn't want to be, you know, you would have hated every second of it. So I mean, throughout the summer and the rehab that I was having to do, I it never felt like uh never felt like it was work or something I didn't want to do. Every day I got to come to the rink with those guys who are now some of my best friends and we talk every day and you know I'm gonna crash on Bulls's couch here for a little bit like it's 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 all good so um those some, conversations the boys, the boys have somewhere yes definitely helped out a lot those conversations must have been great your dad's like we need your help yeah. at the yeah. ranch and yeah. you're like uh, this combine dad, is not gonna drive itself dad I'm going to Zach Bryan tonight he sings yeah. songs about cowboys yeah. it's similar um but, uh, no, that's great. So, Boldy's couch, I, I bet he has a nice couch, right? Yeah, well. Soft. Restoration hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big He's white one. I've, I've been. Because he told us when we had the when we had him uh, at the golf course is that he had a designer, remember? That's right, yeah. He's got so a designer couch. Have you, what's, oh, does yeah. his place look like it was designed by a designer? Oh, yeah, that place wasn't put together by Matt okay. Boldy. I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> but it would does. look a lot different. There'd probably be, there'd probably the walls would be empty, and there would be a couch. It might be. There might be a, a sofa, but it might be a chair like this or something, something from the rink. But yeah. um, he's nice enough to to let me stay there, and um, it should it should work well. I guess it's early, though. We'll see how we do. All right, let's test it to see if Bowley listens to the podcast. He's going to have a little 12 by 12 poster on his wall. What is it, like the Rolling Stones or something? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Oh, he got – yeah, he got a miniature um... – Rolling Stones, yeah. Was he tried to get a huge one of the Rolling He thought he was getting a Stones. huge poster, and it came, and it was like tiny. Yeah, so somewhere tiny. there's a poster. So he's like, "Yes, I've got this big Rolling thing Stones like in that behind house. my you'll couch." Have to find it. He might have just thrown it away. <laughs> he's got he's got a, a cool room of of old album covers and stuff, and a couple cool green chairs, a dark themed room, and we call it the bitching room. So if you want to go get some bitching done, you go in there. That's where you you talk about your problems. Yeah, exactly. And then once we get out of the room, it's all good. So if you need to go do some bitching and and do that's a great do, idea to have a room. spot for the negativity. So and you have to leave it there. That's great. Yeah, we leave it there. I got to get my touch on the place. So he's got Patriot stuff up there, and I just I'm not a fan of it. So I gotta I gotta put my little Mason Shaw on the place. And I would say get some Wainwright in yeah, there. Yeah, get some Wainwright gear in there. So we'll see. Get oh. a longhorn, one of those longhorns that say. everyone has above their bed. Yeah. Or like the Highland cattle that everyone thinks every cow looks like the yeah. one you see on Instagram with the hair in front of their face. I was like, no, there's not many of those, to be honest. So, You know, you uh, you did a pretty epic Let's Play Hockey um, that helped the boys, surprised them. How do you, when you look back, how do you grade your effort? Anything you felt <laughs> you left on the table? Maybe shotgun a beer, maybe tear the shirt off. Like, how do you feel about it? I it was, was good. I was happy with it. I yep. think if I was to ever have to do it again, I think the situation played a big impact in it yeah. in the sense that I was surprised just out of a out of surgery and didn't expect to do it. But I think if I was to do it again, um, I'd probably try to take it up another notch. I don't know. I can't release my secrets what I would do, but I would find a way to take it to another level. And I'm sure the, the Midwest mentality of the people of Minnesota would appreciate it. Okay. So there's more in the tank. 
just good to know. Let's hope. Let's hope we don't have to do that for a long time for no, this kind of situation. No. But if there ever comes a day where, where, where someone reaches out to me and I'm I'm out of playing hockey or whatever it may be, I I don't think I can say no. I'm gonna have to jot one off it. I like how he teased it too. He's like, let's just say the Midwest <laughs> demographic might really like what I. I've definitely I thought about bring. it. I definitely thought. Okay, about so it. he's got he's got something. Yeah. Like maybe like a fish or like. He's got something themed Midwest that he's he's <laughs> like I said I got it. I got all right, it. all right. Or else, or else he's got might, it in might, the holster. We might see it happen on all right, Saturday all right. if someone else pulls it off. I like it. All right. Up. So you're back. Give us the I'm back tour in terms of so it's Boldy's couch. What's for dinner? Yep. Like, like, yeah, I've already I've already started the I'm back tour. Um, I went to E A T O. It's called Edo. Went there okay. for a pasta dish downtown. We found this spot at the end of summer. So. Um, I absolutely hammered that before before my time in IS. So I've already I've already checked that off the list. Um, we're probably gonna go here, right from here, to grab some lunch just up the hill on Grand. That's always a staple, and uh, Grand Old Creamery is up there too. So, shout out to that place. I mean, that's some of the best ice cream I think you'll ever find. That's good malted malt ball in the but cone. I mean, honestly, I just want to stop at everyone's house and, and see what's going on. I don't like being alone for a minute right now, and I haven't seen these guys for a long time. So, I might have to do the tour out to Edina and uh, start knocking on doors and seeing what guys are doing. But it's just, uh, it's nice to be back and see the guys again. One what? thing we did in Des Moines I really liked is every day after practice for the most part, because a lot less families, right? So it, it makes it a little bit easier, but we, we just played cards every day. We'd go find a new coffee shop and, and throw the cards around, go for a chuck. So I really appreciated that. So I might have to get a card crew going here. Like what kind of cards? Just seven up, seven down, oh, nice. bus kind of thing. See, he is the ultimate bunkhouse that's what, guy. But that's why the American League at, at times can be like more fun than the National League because everybody's for the most part mm -hmm. is like twenty to twenty seven years old yeah. trying to prove something. Yeah. Like you're never settled. So it's what's for lunch today and everybody Everyone's goes. there. It's like a, it's definitely a different dynamic. Like I said, guy there's you know a lot of families on our team. I totally get there's a lot of running around to do, but in the American League, we didn't have many guys with families. So every day is like, what are we doing? Well, there's six of us going. You know, whether we're we're going to chuck darts and play pool, well, you got a group of eight of you going. If you're going to play cards, there's there's six. So I uh, I have a ton of respect for the guys in Iowa. I have a ton of respect for the staff. I have nothing but good things to say about my time in Iowa, even, you know, this last two months or the prior years. So I just want to make sure the guys know that and, and you know, they feel like they're important. Because, you know, it can be – there can be times where you feel like you might not get to the next level ever. I mean, I – been in in that spot when I was younger thinking like damn I'm, I'm never gonna be able to make this jump kind of thing but you know keep your head down keep grinding you never know what can happen are you back of the bus beer guy for sure <laughs> I remember my first year we had a lot of older guys Andrew Hammond um Pross was there Cal O'Reilly Matt Reed just older veterans Matt Barkowski who'd played significant NHL time and my rookie year I just wanted to be at the card table so bad and I think after Christmas they finally started talking to me and <laughs> I weaseled my way into there by being the guy who would grab the beers of the cooler for him yeah that's awesome I think that they're going to want to make sure that they've they've got some good quality water and they can find that with Aquarius Home Services um, I've got the Connecticut K5 system at my house uh, it's clear it's crisp it's good refreshing um, so you can get one of those, a little tap right at your countertop. And heck, if you need a whole home water softener system, that's terrific too. The soap lathers up. You don't need much for your hair. You've get, you get good, glossy hair with quality water. You don't have to wash your dishes three, four times. Or after they get out of the dishwasher, wow, you know you don't have to scrub the soft spots. This water sounds great. That's off of. Yeah, yeah. So um, if you've got any water problems, Aquarius Home Services, solve them. That's what they do. Um, check them out, AquariusHomeServices.com. Well done. Yeah, man. Uh, what else we got from you, my man? Let me pass it over to you. So I think if I was going to, you know, go out and get some food or some fresh items, I would probably go to Cub. Uh, the reason why is that Cub is one of us. They sponsor this podcast. They were on the Homer Hankies for the Twins. I don't know if you know that. They're also on PJ Flex headset. They're, you know, if you want, whether you're going over there for food or drink, you might want to get some pale ales or some THC sodas. If you want delivery, cub.com has you sorted. Visit Cub to get the freshest products, including milk. Uh, they're one of us. They're local. We love them. Cub. T-Rex cookies. 
Well, they're making a statement. That statement is cravings are not a weakness. I have a sweet tooth. I love cookies, and these are the ones for me. There are four half-pound frozen cookie pucks in each bag. You throw those bad boys in the oven, they expand to about seven inches in size. That's probably enough to satisfy my sweet tooth. Can't wait. They come in three flavors, monster, chocolate chip, and caramel chocolate chip. You can find them in the frozen dessert section at Cub Food Stores and other select retailers in the Twin Cities. They're a high-quality cookie experience that outsizes the competition. Only use natural ingredients that give you a consistent baking experience at home every time. T-Rex cookies. They're making a statement. So give us some good spots in Des Moines. Like, where, where, where would you go? Uh, the only spots I can recall are, like, Zombie Burger. West Des Moines growing quite a bit. West but. Des Moines growing. The, the dynamics changed a lot. When I first lived there, all the guys lived out in, in West Des Moines. And now most of the guys live downtown, which is cool. Everything's walking distance. So when I was in Des Moines, I was they put me up at the residence in downtown. So I was just – everything was walking distance for me. So the Johnny's Hall of Fame, there, we spent a lot of time there playing darts, watching football, um, having some beers. Uh, Luca, we went there every day for lunch in the East Village. It's a pass the spot. So, you know what? Des Moines is a great city. It's a great American League city. There's, we can't ask for much more out of that, and the, they take great care of us there. So those, probably Johnny's Hall of Fame. God, there's so many hole in the walls I could be going on for a long time here, but some really good spots. Were you, would you play that game when the, what, Mitchell Tenpenny or somebody was there? Country Music Night yeah, recently? Yeah, I was, I was part of Country Night. Was, that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, it was great. Go down there, get a little show. And yeah, play the game. Unfortunately, we... We lost that game, but 20 minutes after the game, they roll the, the mats out over yeah. the ice, and we get to watch the concert from right in the pit. So um, they, do a really, they do that every year, a, a country, or a concert after the game. I think that's a really cool idea. And uh, I never met Mitchell Tempenny before. I got to meet him before the game. I gave him knocks. I said, we'll do our job. You make sure you take care of yours. Unfortunately, we lost the game, but the concert <laughs> show was great. Awesome. Like, all right, beat it, punk. Go, yeah. go, go hit somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, talk hockey for a second because you've got – there's new there's new coaches, but, I mean, Max down there, head coach now. Yeah. Hines, new coach here. Things are a little bit different probably in both spots, but I think they're on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you anticipate the transition, like, in terms of systems and everything yeah. else and culture? Like, does it seem seamless? Do you know what? I – I think I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. I think Mac did a good job in Iowa of getting me prepared for that and, and you know, how they play hockey here. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, your role changes a little bit, and I know what my role is here. Um, I know what Heinz you will expect out of me when I'm playing. So um, it's just you got to make an impression again, though. It's a new coach. It's, you know, there's there's some new people involved around here. So it's maybe – it is different than, than it was before, but – um, at the end of the day, I guess it's always just been my mentality is do whatever it takes to help the team win on that night. And um, I feel like my role around here is, is pretty pretty cemented to, to what I need to do. I love the – I just think the card room. Like we're, we're, we're getting going, Shawzy. Like we're, we're – you watch the games too like yeah. we have to, right? Yeah. And it's feeling like we like that you're in the – you're around – and that's an ingredient that uh, uh, not only would you have to deliver when you get inserted into the cake mix, but, yeah. but it's pretty enticing to have somebody like you um, that that we can use to kind of keep this thing going. Yeah, I mean, they're playing different. Absolutely. I mean, I've watched I've watched lately, and, and it's looked different, and it's felt different, and it's a good time to heat up because because mm-hmm. we need to, right? Like we need we need to make up some points and. There's a good there's a good thing brewing down there, and I'm I'm glad to be part of it now, and I'm just gonna try to keep adding to that fire, and um, like I said, when when called upon, deliver whatever's needed. Wait, now I I, I kind of want to actually talk about the surgery a little bit because I'm unaware of mm-hmm. the ACLs and stuff, but what I picture is you get the newspaper and you have the rubber band on the newspaper, and it's kind of like the skinny one, and that's the ACL it tears yeah. a little bit, and then yeah. it's like you go in there, and I'm gonna be like. Hey doc, you've tried that same rubber band. Do you mind giving me the thick one that they have on the broccoli at the grocery store? Something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what? What is the ACL now? Like, is it your hamstring? Like what? Like you, what is it? So, I mean, when you get a breakdown of a knee, you're like, really, this little, this ligament is going to cost me this much time, kind of thing. Like you would never assume it's going to take that long. But the first two surgeries done, I got a hamstring graft, and the science and, and medicine they figured out since that, like basically, they'll never do that again in a male athlete. So those, unfortunately, were the ones I retore. And um, 
Now they take it from, it's called a patella tendon surgery. So they took it right from the front of your kneecap, just a, a big tendon that doesn't really do too much. And that's what they made my ACL out of. So um, both sides have responded really good. The rehab process is a little bit harder with the patella tendon recovery, which they make into an ACL. But luckily, I think those those hard, hard days are behind me now. And it's just, it's just maintaining what we've been doing for the last 10 and a half months and ice and stim and foam roll, as, as most people say, right? So... Um, that's, that's the operations I've had done recently is the patella tendon and no issues so far. Really? And you can tell it, can you tell a difference? It feels bulkier for sure. Like, like, um, inside, inside the knee feels like there's less room or something. Yeah. Less room, but I needed more strength there and it's, it's providing that so far. So is this, what is this? Yes. Yeah, what you can knock on it. Let me give that a knock. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, there we go. So how about like, how about on the ice? Any of your gear change? Um, well, I've been keeping food on the table for Don Joy for some time now, so I've rotated. <laughs> Don Joy's a brace company. I've, knee. Yeah, exactly. So that's the knee brace company I have. Um, so I wear one on my right knee right now, and I hate it. I really do. I don't know if you've ever played with knee brace, yeah. but it, it, I feel like it, it does play a factor, but it's just what I need to do right now. So You feel so free when you take it off. Oh, my it's gosh. Like such a nice like You can feeling. fly or something. Yeah. Like Connor Dewar's got one on right now, and he said that he gained a lot more respect for me knowing what it's like to play with a knee brace on. So there's been times I've had two on, there's been times I've had none on, but right now I got the, the right Don Joy on, and like I said, I should be sponsored by them by now. <laughs> Do you, uh, I'm wondering, you know, when, you, when I was watching your Becoming Wild, and it was fascinating because they, even the doctor would say, kind of to your question, well, Mason, we're trying to compare <laughs> your right knee to your left knee, but yeah. maybe the left knee, you did the bad one, and then, we did it the other way, and so that's not really a norm, and we can't even figure this guy out. I'm wondering, did you have any – who kept your sense of humor through this? Like, was there any, like, gallows humor, like guys calling you or, like yeah, – you get FaceTimes like, from like, the bar or Yeah, anything. just – I mean, because I think you need that to go through – maybe not. Maybe you're just a hard-ass farmer. No, that, I'm not. I, I take some humor out of everything, and there's no one that makes more knee jokes other than myself. Like, funny. I, I tear myself down about these more than anyone, and I get enough heat for how short I am, and then you just add the knees on top of it. I just, I kind of have the excuse now to act like, like a 65-year-old because that's how my knees feel. <laughs> so if I start acting like that around the room, Back I, have, in my day. I have a reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if my knees could talk kind of thing. So, yeah, there's there's humor in all this. There has okay. to be. I mean, there's times to, to be hard, but I don't think I would have got through it if I, don't I, think if I didn't can. make jokes about this and... It's amazing what you've done. And I just was thinking, man, you need to have some levity no, to absolutely. be like, you know, I mean, cause you, you, you know, if you start from why me, mm -hmm. but that's completely not how you're oriented as a yeah. player or as a person. So you got to quickly get into like, who sent you that text? Reward yourself for the battles you've, you've put in before. Uh, it was uh, Dean MacArthur, Clark MacArthur's dad. You they were playing with Clark and Carth. Probably he, uh, they're from the local area, and he coached me in, in what midget a bantam stud. hockey. So that, that was, that, like... he calls me the honey badger. He's really, really cool. He's kind of like a mentor of mine in terms of just someone who's giving you guidance throughout the years. So that was. That's like greatest that generation stuff. Yeah. Reward yourself for the battles you've put in before. That's like Tom Hanks movie. Yeah. Like put him in uh, the Pacific. Yeah, uh, exactly. Masters of the Air. What yeah. a stud. Thank you, Mr. MacArthur. Yeah. Um, no, we're so happy that you're back. Uh, if you want to do a card game, like, we could play. Yeah, that's a good card table here. Absolutely. I'd love to learn. Up. I don't know any of these games that you no, guys No, you need play. to learn because there's nothing, there's nothing better than that. I, I don't think I've slept after a game on a bus in four, you know, or wasn't obviously on a bus much last year, but the prior years in Iowa, I don't think I ever slept on a bus right after a hockey game. You know, whether you're pulling in at 4 a.m., we're throwing cards down till 4 a.m. <laughs> kind of thing. I just – it's the best thing in the world, and it's just – those are the those are the times I feel like I'll remember most about hockey is, mm -hmm. is is that's where the camaraderie starts is on moments like that. So if there's ever a card table or or a chuck as we like to call it in Des Moines, I'm there for it. A we chuck. Yeah, we group chat down. And who's down for a chuck? Who's down for a chuck? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, rally the troops. Bring your wallet and that's uh, all I ever got to be was a winger. podcaster. That's uh, all right. I, honestly, I'm enjoying. It. Who keeps calling you by the way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. That's They're like, hey, we got Shaw's contract here at Wainwright. <laughs> yeah, he He's hasn't not here. It. We need to, we need to get this thing. <laughs> this signed is right called now. we're sending a docu sign yeah. to you. Um, well, so, I do hope you take a moment too to. Uh, I know you're like, it's like you can't 
stop because mm-hmm. you got to keep going forward. But like at some point when you're For wearing sure. the wild sweater, whatever, just like a really quick one, just be like, yes, <laughs> because yeah. it's been a grind. You know what? I, I get told, you know, remarkable how you've done this or crazy how you've done this. And it, it just seems like that's what was necessary to do next. I've never thought anything I've done has been, you know, that crazy in terms of getting over this stuff. It's just felt like the next step that was needed to get back to being on the ice. And that's all I've ever wanted was just to be on the ice and be with your teammates. Cause there's, there's not a better feeling than sitting in your locker room exhausted after a win where you got to help out. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you know, I don't know if I know of anyone who's done four ACLs to come back and play, but it just felt like that's what was necessary for me to get back on the ice and be in the locker room. So. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing the mentality there too. And then to, Again, knock on wood, but what was it, nine and a half months? Yeah, I think it was nine and a half months. <laughs> like, remember, that seems remember, fast to me. It does. I look back now, and it and it really does. Um, I also remember sitting in here in, in the summer, and you guys were like, how's it going where it's at? And I'm like, oh, I'll be playing by end of November. Or, yeah, end yeah. or it started December kind of thing. I was like, I'll be ready, which as a player, if I would have, you know, I think that's what you need to tell yourself is you're sure. going to be ready. If I would have got told, hey, you know, there's a chance you're going to play in Minnesota till. February 16th, I've been like, how am I going to get through this in May kind of thing, right? Yeah. So um, some days felt like it was passing like molasses, but now the, the days have led me here, and it's all it's all good. Let's put it yeah, the, on the spot kind of because you've been around enough locker rooms to yeah. know. Uh, it's been a challenging year for the Wild, too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's injuries and this sweet problem, and that problem, sick. sweet yeah. and ill. Like they're they're always chasing something. Yeah. But what 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 do you find? And granted, this is with one practice under your belt. Like, what was the state of the team? What was the energy? And and they've won four in a row. But like, I feel like it's it felt like a team for me being around here. That's that's earned their break finally. That's earned their their breakthrough of continually playing good hockey in a row. Of feeling like a good spot, you can go into a game where you're not you're going into the game knowing you're going to win. You know, you're not you're not just trying to find a way not to lose. You're going into games trying to win. So, I mean, today was my first day around the group. Obviously, I've watched the last couple of games and played some really good hockey. And confidence is contagious, and you can really feel that in the room right now. And I'm really excited to see where this goes because, like I said, I think we're we're trending in yeah, the right it direction. It seems like they're heating up at the right time. Yeah, absolutely, they can go on a run. Like they've won seven and nine, but it doesn't feel yeah, like, like they've been just, playing let's do great. This it's quietly. just nose to let's the grindstone. Just do this quietly. And it's just one game at a time mentality, and it's just kind of like they're they're stacking up yeah. wins, and you hit refresh on the standings um, as a as like a fan or somebody that works in it. Like it's just they're slowly yeah, climbing, climbing, and it's not like you know that huge excitement. It's not mm-hmm. Edmonton right now where it's a fourteen game yeah. win streak, and you're right back. But they're capable of that with the right mentality. It's, it seems that that mentality is there right now. I think that's why this group's always been a playoff group and always been successful is the mindset is it's it's 82 games here I mean it, there's times this year it probably hasn't gone the way they'd like or there's been there's been a lot of things to go through but um, just quiet go about our business we don't need everyone talking about us you don't need to be on the headlines of TSN we'll just we'll show up to work we'll put our work in and um, the result will be what it'll be but it, it won't be for a lack of trying and it'll be everything we had into it and we'll st- stack some wins up here what are you looking forward to most? So, I mean, maybe it is sitting in that stall all sweaty and stinky mm-hmm. after a win and, and with the buddies. Um, is it cards on the airplane? Is it pregame meal? Like, like what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to probably just just playing a game and sitting in that room after a win. Um, you know, talking about what you did wrong, what you did right, just that feeling of, of being together. And I do enjoy playing cards on the plane, so... Uh, I look forward to getting heckled by Zuki, <laughs> throwing some cards around. So that'll be fun too. But um, I just take everything in stride. I mean, I feel like when something's taken away from you, you know, like, like hockey was for a bit here, you have a ton of gratitude for it. You don't take it for granted. So it sounds cliche, but I just, I truly couldn't be happier here being here and, and trying to help this team get wins and, and keep going. What's, what's brewing here because a lot of good things on the horizon for us.
Well, man, it's uh, it's inspiring to kind of watch you come back from this. And we've had a couple of great guests on the podcast in a row just kind of talking about deeper subjects, you know, like the return from a fourth ACL battle in dark spots and mm -hmm. uh, Freddie Gaudreau talking about, you know, special needs nephew and stuff yeah. like that. And um, it's cool to see the, the personal side of you guys and the battles that you have to go yeah. through um, to get the ultimate goal, which is ironically playing a game that you love. So mm -hmm. appreciate you sharing some of that in your time with us, man. Absolutely. I, I'm glad to come on and I hope... Hopefully down the road, you boys invite me back for a fourth because hey, this chair kind of feels like home too. <laughs> I, I You'd be more than welcome here, especially if you can teach me seven up and seven down. Is yeah, that we, what we call yeah, it? Yeah, seven up, seven Why down. Why don't you go be an NHLer for as long as humanly possible? Yeah. We can talk about that later. Thanks, buddy. Sure. We're here. Till it's here. Peace.